in the business sector between 2007 and 2018. The number of women-owned business in the county grew 58%, breaking barriers along the way. Attorney and community leader Virginia Blumenthal founded the first women-owned law firm in the city of Riverside. Terry Delhammer became Temecula's first female winery owner when she purchased Keyways Winery. I really enjoyed the challenge and, and it did take me a little while before it sunk in that I was um, the first female um, winery owner in I think Southern California and it was all about me. I mean, I owned the property and I ran the business just coincidentally. Um, most of my managers and staff were female, so we were kind of the, this uh, team of uh, ladies venturing into the wine business. And I found that the winery owners, all males, sometimes couples, um, were very welcoming. I would suggest to and, and advise any woman who's interested in opening a, a business or starting into an industry that's male dominated, just put blinders on it, you know, go do it and not worry about whether somebody is going to think differently of you or treat you differently because you're a female. I think that's really changing today and hopefully I've made a little bit of difference in that. Half of Riverside County's 2.47 million residents are females, but women have not always been equally represented in their local governments. In Riverside, there hasn't been a woman on the city council for six years. In 2019, that all changed. Voters elected Erin Edwards, the first ever openly LGBTQ woman to serve on the city council. Voters also chose Gabby Placencia to represent the city's fifth ward. She is now the first ever Latina council member for the city of Riverside. To be the first Latina elected in the history of Riverside was huge, not for me, but for our people that, that we represent, um, to have the voice, to feel like they're included for once. And that's what's been so great for me to be a part of. The first part of my um, tenure was really focusing on the pandemic and how we can get those resources um, inclusive of uh, testing and vaccines um, and really to the areas that needed it the most. We also in this, this short tenure um, declared racism a public health crisis, which was huge for me to really start the dialogue about diversity, inclusivity in our policies. And for me, long-term is really looking at housing and bringing good jobs to the community. Um, we just, we have so much work to do. I really care about our future here and it's important for us to have more women at the table. And so whatever I can do to support those women, I am here. We didn't have a woman serve as mayor in any Riverside County city until 1963, when Nina Parker was elected to Corona's city council and then later appointed mayor. Fortunately, we're now seeing many more first as more women fill the mayor role. In 2010, Wildemar Council Member Bridget Moore was the first woman in the city's history to serve as mayor and was elected a second time in 2016. In 2020, Eastfield City Council member Jocelyn Yao became the youngest woman of color to serve as mayor of any California city. Many more women are reaching top positions in government services and greatly influencing policy. One of them is Heidi Marshall, Director of Housing, Homelessness Prevention and Workforce Solutions for Riverside County. Um, through a director position, I'm able to impact and set the vision for the organization. I set the tone, um, drive the values. I have the um, fortune of working with amazing people who tackle really big problems like ending homelessness, uh, figuring out how to effectuate some change and add affordable housing and, and tackle things like the income gap that, um, that is posing so many different challenges to the growth of our economy here in Riverside County. See a lot of women in, in government now, I think we've, we've grown in numbers by leaps and bounds. Um, where I don't see many women is in the housing development field. And I would encourage more women to become involved. It is, I know I've benefited greatly from, from women who have paved the way and, and provided a lot of, of support. And I would get nothing but joy to be able to pay that back to, to somebody who, who 
who was interested in, in getting into government services and in particular the housing field. These are just a few of the notable female influencers in the Riverside County. Of course, there were just thousands of others. They are all making history, whether they're breaking barriers or following in the footsteps of those who came before them, inspiring future generations to do the same. Back to you, Mia.